So for folks who actually probably grew up in the church, this passage from the Gospel of Luke might be familiar. It's a very famous passage in which Jesus is addressing his disciples and he's telling them that they don't need to worry. Anybody out there worry at all? Anybody? Yeah, a little bit. Sometimes when I read this text, I think, really, come on, Jesus. I mean, don't worry, just give it all up. And I think it's a little extreme. He might not be offering a very realistic advice to those of us who find ourselves in the midst of the world and sometimes in the midst of wrestling with all the anxieties that surround us. Amen? Amen. Kind of goes on to talk about the lilies in the field. Consider the lilies of the field. They don't... They don't care about anything, and yet God prepares them in the wonderful splendor that we see in the flowers of the field, and even greater than Solomon in all of his splendor, God takes care of them. He says, don't worry about what you have to eat or drink. God will provide that for you. Seriously? Yeah. Anybody worry about what you eat or drink? A couple of you, maybe. Yeah. I think there are other parts of the world that worry about that more than we do in the United States, don't you think? And then he comes down to this last line, and I actually prefer the translation I'm going to share with you rather than the CEB translation. He says, for where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Hmm. Where your heart is, where your treasure will be. I wonder about all these things because I'm wondering what Jesus means by don't worry. Uh, In McGray de Vega's book, Questions Jesus Asks, he kind of changes the question. He says, why are you anxious? Anxious. Why are you anxious? So I'm just going to start by asking, is anybody out there anxious about anything? And if you're anxious about anything, what is it that you are anxious about the most? What is the, what's the core of that anxiety? If anybody's willing to share, wait a minute, I'm going to start. Okay. Because I think there's different levels of worry and anxiety. And I'm not sure Jesus is talking about, you know, concern about the future or those types of things. I think he's talking about where our heart resides and how we carry that throughout our lives, right? And whether we allow that to develop into something else that is unhealthy, an unhealthy anxiety. Because I don't think he's being unrealistic in acknowledging the fact that we do care about what's going to happen tomorrow a little bit. We do. We care about problems that we need to face and address, right? But when those problems become more than a problem, and they begin to fester, and we begin to spin them around and around in our head, then they become something else, don't they? Um, Then the reality is nowadays we have science and we have medicine, we understand the human body and the way the brain works probably a little bit more than back in Jesus' day. What do you think? And I'm going to give you just a testimony. I currently wrestle with anxiety. I had never been an anxiety-ridden person my whole life until I hit 50. I don't know what it is. It just came on. Anybody ever has that experience? Uh, And then I began to be able to relate to other people because for years people would say, man, I'm so anxious about that or I'm afraid of flying. I feel like I'm being suffocated. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Just pray about it. God will take care of it. Then it happened to me. I was getting ready to go to Africa, the first trip to Africa. This was several years ago. I was staying in my friend David Miller's house, sleeping on his couch. And at 2 in the morning... I woke up and I felt like I was suffocating. And I stood up and I could not get rid of that feeling. And it got heavier and heavier. It felt like everything was imploding around me. And I was pacing up and down the hall of his house, worrying about it. I thought to myself, I'm not going to be able to go to Africa. I mean, it was debilitating, the anxiety. And it came on really fast and from nowhere. The only thing I can figure is that his couch was really soft and cushy and I was sinking into it, and I probably woke up and thought I was literally suffocating. But it triggered something. And so I was pacing. I was up for probably two hours. And I thought, should I wake David up? (laughs) Should I tell somebody about it? I tried calling Leslie, she was my wife, she was asleep. So then I went into his living room, and I sat down on the couch, and I took some deep breaths, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna practice Lamaze. So I breathing, and I did start to feel a little better. And then I realized that David had a very aggressive dog. Because while I was sitting on the couch, I heard, and that little moment took me out of the anxiety because I had something else to worry about in that moment. And I got up out of the couch, and I said, 
nice puppy, nice puppy. And I backed out of the room and I went and got back on the couch and I fell asleep. That was the first real like heavy duty anxiety attack I had ever had in my life. And I've had others along the way. And I do think a lot of it has to do with age. Age. <laughs> Right? I'm sharing that story with you to let you know that that kind of anxiety, I don't think that's the anxiety that Jesus is necessarily addressing. And I want you to know that that's, that's a real thing. And your physical health is important, amen? But your mental health is important too. And if you're wrestling with those kind of uncontrollable anxieties, or you have things that you need to work out with your own life, even your own mental health, I encourage you, and you need to hear this as your pastor. You need to go get help. And it's okay to go get the help you need. Find a therapist, a psychiatrist, whoever it is that can help guide you and direct you and determine and assess what your need is to confront those things. Those are very real medical issues, and those are anxieties that we need to be honest and open about, and especially as a community like Cornerstone where we can talk about those things and find a safe space that we can actually share that as a part of our lives. And that's why I share that with you, because I needed to go get help. And I sought it, and it made a huge difference. And that's important for you too. Amen? Amen. But there's other levels of anxiety, aren't there? And I think Jesus is dealing with the day-to-day -day kind of anxieties, the things that maybe we make to be more important that begin consuming us. And so I'm going to give you just a moment to share, why are you anxious? What are the things that trigger your anxieties, if anybody's willing to share? And I'll repeat so those online can hear it. Anybody? Politics. Politics? That creates anxiety? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those kind of things, don't they, Paige? The, the world issues. And it seems like everybody's at each other, right? Nobody's listening to one another. I think at the root of a lot of anxiety is an issue of control. We don't feel like we can control it. Um, and, uh, and then we just kind of stew on it, and it begins to fester. Uh, Jesus says, why are you anxious? Why are you worried about those things? Well, because we live in the world, Jesus, right? Those are sometimes the real issues we have to face, but Jesus says, don't worry. Don't worry. Hmm. What does he mean by that? Anybody else? What other anxieties you have? Yeah? Relationships. Relationships? Yeah, that's right. Multiple levels. Multiple levels. Whether you're in a relationship and you're trying to work things out, or you don't have a relationship and you long for a relationship, it just goes on and on and on and on, right? It can create anxiety. Yeah, Judy? Health. Health. Yeah, I have a health trigger, anxiety. Uh, you, you have that little pain, you wonder what it is, then you Google it. <laughs> you, you are with me on this one, right? That's the worst thing to do, by the way, because immediately you have cancer and you're probably going to die next week, right? And then you're up and, oh my gosh, I've got cancer, oh my gosh, you know. Anxiety, anxiety. Yeah. Uncertainty. Uncertainty. What's the future going to bring? Um, did y'all know Finland is the happiest place in the world? Finland, like negative 10 degrees, right? I'm going to tell you what they found in the study about why Finland's the happiest place in the world. is because they have systems in place for caring for their, for their elderly. In Finland, because of their social systems of medicine and care, when you get older, you don't have to worry about where you're going to be taken care of because you know there's a place for you to be taken care of. That reduces levels of anxiety, tends to make places happier, right? Because the uncertainty of that is always spinning in our heads, especially as we get older, like turning 50 and wondering why this has happened to me now and, you know, all those types of things, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Being vulnerable. Being vulnerable, yeah. We live in a society where we want to put up walls to protect ourselves, right, from being hurt by other people. And that can create anxiety in itself. Or even what other people kind of, how people view us. I, we were talking about this in the first service. I, I can't imagine being a young person in the world today. Um, and th for this reason, social media. 
I mean, the news, we can go a whole another angle about anxiety in the news or media, but social media, I mean, you used to have to go to school to get beat up. <laughs> now you get, can get beat up at a distance online, right? And it can be relentless, and it can also be anonymous. I mean, it's a brutal world out there. Um, and sometimes we want to project images of ourselves to others that are not real. I mean, how many times do you look at a Facebook post and you think, oh my gosh, these people are always so happy. Did you know there's literally a condition of depression related around Facebook? Because when people spend too much time on Facebook and they see everybody going on vacation and having a great time, then they're like, my life sucks. <laughs> it's like a fear of missing out. It creates anxiety in and of itself. And in some ways, we also want to protect ourselves from others because we don't want to let them know who we truly are for fear that they might use it to attack us or even hurt us. I mean, gosh, there's so much anxiety. And then Jesus tells us, you know, we shouldn't be worrying about these things. Hmm. Jesus wants to release us from the anxieties of the world. And part of that is Jesus wants to remind us who we are and whose we are. Right? Jesus wants to remind us that each and every one of us has something to be grateful for, to be able to celebrate. Which, by the way, gratitude is one of the great healers of all the ailments of the world. If you want to start feeling a little better about yourself and about the world and the life around you, a simple practice is to get up in the morning and after you say your prayers, just start writing down a list of things you are grateful for. Don't think too big. Think about what you're grateful for in the moment with the things and the people around you. I begin every day, Lord, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for the community here at Cornerstone. Lots of things for us to be grateful for. It actually takes us out of the maze of anxiety and worry to remind us that we have so many things that we're blessed by, that we're surrounded by each and every day. So gratitude is one of the great healers in confronting and battling worry and anxiety. Also, growing in a deeper relationship with the God who loves you. You hear that? You, every single one of you, are loved by God. You are God's beloved, regardless of what anybody says about you out there, right? God loves you. And so the relationship between you and God is important. Beginning your day or ending your day, whenever your time you set aside to be with God, that's important work each and every day, right? Your prayer life, your devotion life, setting time aside to just be present with God, to remember you are God's, and God loves you. That is a healing act. Jesus is reminding us of that. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also, he says. If you're so caught up in all the stuff spinning in the midst of the world, if you allow yourself to continue to go down those paths where you end up is in the maze, and it doesn't seem like you can get out of it. But the way out of the maze is a grateful heart and a heart that grows closer to God. Because in spending that time with God each and every day, we're reminded who we are and whose we are. Praise be to God. That's why those spiritual practices are so important. And I'm going to broaden it a little bit. Those spiritual practices and that advice to spend time in a relationship with God, that's not just a Christian thing. Every single faith tradition all over the world reminds its people as a community that that time apart, to be, remem to, to be reminded that you're part of a story bigger than yourself, right? Brings the focus back to a heart of relationship and love and life and peace and to know and to be known, which is why we sang, Who I Say I Am, right? You're loved by God. Monica had her hand up. She wants to share. I did because I think I, you know, how I feel about kids. Yeah. And I think that it's really important to remember that you are loved by God. Yeah. And that you are loved by 
I, I am extremely anxious about these kids and, and what's going to happen to them and where they're going. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just not what's going on today. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you for that. That's what it is. Maturity. Yeah. Like fine wine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She said she, the anxiety that's around children and youth and even in the world today, all the pressures that they're facing, that, that there's anxiety about what direction they might head in life. Um, that's an anxiety not just for the children and youth, right? That's also an anxiety for the parents and the grandparents who are raising them. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, we, we get so focused on tomorrow or the future that we, it, it robs the joy we have today. I mean, that's the great quote I keep hearing over and over again related to anxiety, is that we worry so much about tomorrow that we rob the joy of today. You know, there's something beautiful about the Stoics and the practice of Stoicism. If you ever studied any of that, the, the Stoics actually believe that you should focus on the moment, right? Not allow yourself to get too far ahead and stop worrying about everything that happened before. Because today is the day we find life in. And so we should celebrate the moment. Stoicism offers us that because it's true. There's not much I can do about tomorrow until tomorrow gets here. And I definitely shouldn't be spending so much time worrying about all the things that happened in the past. Let them go. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In it. Praise be to God. Amen. I had another little moment of revelation this week when I was thinking through movies. I was thinking, and there's got to be a movie where... There's a demonstration of like a pure release of anxiety, even though the, the world is coming all around. Y'all ever think of the, you, so any movies pop into your mind when I say that? Like Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption's a good one. I didn't think about Shawshank Redemption, but it works. How about this one? Forrest Gump. How many of you love Forrest Gump? I can watch that movie over and over and over and over. There's a lot of friends of mine that don't like it too much. But I love Forrest Gump. And the reason I love Forrest Gump is that Forrest Gump, Forrest, lives in the moment. Sure, he has crazy things happen, right? And he deals with them in the moment. Run, Forrest, run, you know. And he runs, you know. But Forrest is always positive even in the midst of his trials and tribulations. Forrest kind of represents and embodies that person who's able to let things go. Now, I know Forrest is a simple guy, but praise be to God for that gift. I mean, that's the testimony of the movie, right? Is that life's going to hurl a whole bunch of stuff at you. And we need to deal with it. We need to overcome some of the problems and the obstacles. And we'll do those when we confront them but we shouldn't allow them to consume us into tomorrow. Because tomorrow's going to come with its own issues. Just deal with them today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.